When you're looking for inspiration in Terraria, especially when it comes to building, where do you get it from? That's a serious question and I will wait. All right, you got it? Okay, good. So for me, it's definitely from movies and from shows and sometimes some stuff I see IRL, but the reality is that it's gonna be whatever you feel like that day. And this day, well, this day we went back into the movies. Hey Troy fans, welcome back to another speed build video. Guys, in this one, I am going to be dipping my toes back into the waters of movies and of, I guess, Disney or Pixar or that kind of thing. No, it's not the up build that we did previously, but it is a build from Kung Fu Panda. Now, there's a couple of really cool spots in that movie that you could probably use as inspiration for a build. The training grounds or the temple, the festival, and I don't know, maybe the noodle bar, which might do later but today is actually going to be just that iconic scene where poe is talking to Uguay, the turtle they're talking at the top of this little kind of mountain overlook and i really just like the way it looks it's got a really cool tree it's got this sort of mountainous steps and rocks and overhang and it's just it, it, it was interesting but all that landscaping and detail it can be tricky and we did run into a few problems but overall this thing looks pretty good and if you look really closely you will see a couple of details that really make this thing well Remind you of the movie. Now, before we get into the build, a couple of quick housekeeping items. As always, guys, feel free to check me out on Twitch or on YouTube because we are multi-streaming if you want to see any of these builds live. And additionally, don't forget to stay until the end of the video because I will be covering all of the materials that I use in this build. So, you know, if you're looking to build something similar or an exact replica, it shouldn't be too hard. And also it helps avoid some of those questions of what block did you use for the floor or what wall did you use for that tree? It's, it's, it's all there. I cover it. Anyways, all that said, guys, let's get into the build, shall we? Alrighty, guys, here we are in the build, and I am starting with the stairs as opposed to the mountain. I don't really know why I decided to do this, but basically, normally you would frame out the mountain and the shape and the design and then kind of fill in the details. In this case, I decided with the stairs for whatever reason, but these are basically just framing out the climb up the stairs. So you'll notice they get thinner as we go down. That's kind of make the illusion of these actually getting thinner or smaller as we get further away. But all I'm using here is some ebon stone blocks and some walls, as well as just some platform. I believe I believe these might be boreal or ebonwood it doesn't really matter um, all painted gray and then i also used a couple of fences i believe in this case some ebonwood fences here just to give it a little bit more texture and design on the sort of downslope. and yeah that's really the main function of this it's really just a large winding staircase that you can use to go up now i am trying to test out different paints and see what i like you know i did try white i think at one point i even tried some colors never really looked great uh, so i was trying to add some shading and that kind of thing but you can kind of play around with this however you want now, of course, naturally, once the stairs are done, I have to actually frame out this mountain design. So we're going to be using a lot of different sort of colors and textures, but really trying to keep it grayscale to some degree. I think having pops of color from the grass is really important, but I did want to add just different textures by actually putting in a combination of stone, some mudstone, and as well as some hellstone and ebonstone. The wall types are varied as well, so I'm not going to keep the same blocks throughout. But again, you're going to use some craggy wall. You're going to use some stone, some mottled stone, you know, just to mix and match things. Again, and we're also going to use the counterparts in the uh, blocks that we use. So some hellstone, some mudstone, as well as just some regular stone walls. And you can kind of throw these out and make sections that look interesting. So there is no specific design I am going for here. It is really just throw stuff together, keep playing around with it, add textures, add walls, add depth, and just kind of keep moving things around. But of course, I do emphasize adding the dirt with some of the grass on it. It just really gives that nice pop of color that helps separate everything out. Now, once that's sort of done, guys, I do decide to move on to the right side here where I'm going to actually try to make our tree. Now, the tree itself is pretty large, so it had to look kind of interesting. It did take me a bit of time to put this thing together. So here you just see I'm going to actually put out the tree and the frame of it in a rough design. And we're going to use some really basic things, some corrupted tendril wall painted brown, as well as our wand which we're going to use to put down i believe some living mahogany here and just kind of sort of frame this whole thing out it does have a rather specific design so i am trying to kind of follow it a little bit it's a very windy overhung kind of tree with sort of a bonsai shape at the same time so again you're going to want to just kind of play around with this um, there isn't a perfect way to do this really can't give you guys any additional tips here but a lot of hammering and a lot of movement is what you want and then once we start adding our negative painted leaf walls and living leaf blocks well you get that 
really, really awesome color. Again, this is the right color. Uh, I wish I could add a little more texture and detail. So I am gonna be making use of our friendly neighborhood rubble maker to give a little bit more texture. The colors are slightly off, but it does work out nicely. Now, once that's done, guys, I just go down the other side of the mound and continue to add a lot of layers and textures by using the same materials that I used on the left. Now, again, you could probably do something a little different here because it does feel a little monotonous, a little bit boring. I think adding more trees or I guess diff different layers throughout this would have been a really good idea. So I did try to do that to the best of my abilities. I do think someone else, maybe you, could probably do something a little bit more interesting with this design. But I do like the texturing. I do think it adds a nice little bit of detail that's missing from this and still feels like it's appropriate to the actual build that you would see in the movie. And then just adding your strange plants, all that greenery and that stuff really helps it pop. So that's pretty much most of the design, guys. If you have any questions, do let me know. But I'm going to go ahead and shut up. You guys can enjoy the rest of the build and the music, and we will see you at the end of this section. Alrighty guys, with the build done, I'm gonna go ahead and cover all of the materials like I promised at the beginning of this video. Now, as you can see, we did hide a little chest here because we're in space and I don't wanna kind of throw this up. So, you know, really this build, while it seems complex, as you can see here, it's actually not that bad. The complexity comes with the texturing, which comes from a lot of the blocks and some of the walls, but ultimately we're not going too crazy when it comes to paints or anything else. Now, I think this is a kind of good lesson to learn for people that are trying to build different things. We have a lot of different Different walls and again you can pause here if you want to take a closer look but you know you're not gonna see anything too crazy of course we're using a ton of craggy stone wall we're gonna use some mottled stone wall we're gonna use some ivy stone wall some mudstone and some hellstone brick wall these are all like fairly common I don't necessarily use the ivy stone or the mottled stone as much I figured it made sense in this build just to kind of break it up a bit. Traditionally, I would use craggy stone for the majority of the build, but this was a really good place to use these because I was gonna need the extra texture. Now, when it comes to other background, of course, we're gonna use that ebon stone brick in a couple of places. We have the living leaf wall for that greenery. We do have some spooky wood wall and the corrupted tendril wall, as well as actually some ebon wood fence in our tree. This just gives us some texture and I guess a little bit more interesting design around what we're doing. And then finally, the shade wood fence wall is literally just on the stage that you can see here nothing too crazy again you could swap any of these out for other fences if you like but this is the design and the choices I made and I think overall it gives you a nice idea of all the textures now when we move on to the blocks of course we're gonna have a little bit of a different sort of feel here because the blocks themselves again it's really just textures and it's gonna be a lot of basic stones and that kind of thing so you know you're gonna have your mudstone your stone block your ebon stone and your hellstone and I think overall it looks pretty good now moving to more organic Organic materials, we do have three types of wood, not including our living wood wand and our living mahogany wand. So we use spooky wood, some wood, and some rich mahogany. But this is all really just gonna be in the tree. So of course, that means you're gonna have a ton of texture without doing a ton of work, and I am all for it. 
Now, of course, we did use the leaf wand to do all the leaves that are pink, and we do that by having, uh, you know, some negative paint and not pink paint. But what we actually did paint pink on this tree was some Ethereum blocks. Now, this is interesting because once you paint these deep pink, they kind of look like peaches, which is interesting because, well, that's what the tree actually is in the movie. Now, of course, speaking of those paints, guys, of course, we did use the deep pink and the negative paint, and then we used a really basic palette of gray, some white, some brown, and some green. This is Pretty obvious, you're gonna see where all of this is. Keeping it simple, I think, was the way to go. So our palette and our colors is very basic, and I think that's what makes this sort of stand out, is that you have a nice bright tree and some very kind of muted sort of earth tone colors in the back. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So hopefully that gives you a better idea of all of the materials, and hopefully if you decide to make something similar or take elements of this build in the future, you'll have a good reference point. So with that said, guys, let's go ahead and move on with the rest of the build. All right, guys, so there you go. There is our Kung Fu Panda build done. And I really got to say, I do like the way that this thing turned out. I mean, I would have liked to have done a little bit more work on the left side of the build to add some background, maybe some cap mountains or something like that, just to give it a little bit more of a feel. But overall, it looks pretty good. Of course, the part that stands out the most to me is going to be that tree. It actually does look pretty good. I was able to get some decent texturing uh, using the rubble maker and some negative paint. So pretty happy with it, although it's kind of the standout feature of this design. The mountain itself is pretty good in a lot of places. Again, I wish I could have added a little bit more texture or just something to kind of pull it out a bit more because it is a little bit stale in my opinion, despite all the texturing work and the different shapes and, you know, I guess the shading and shadowing and all that stuff. But yeah, overall, it's not too, too bad. The stairs, they're stairs. They're fine. They could be more interesting. I didn't want to focus too hard on them. I think maybe if I'd interrupted them with a bit of stone or just something that kind of broke up the build a bit and wasn't so clean, that might have been a good sort of solution to that problem. Not perfect, but a solution. And then finally, that tiny little detail of adding Ugwe the turtle and Po the panda. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Of course, guys, that is just my opinion. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. What did you like? What did I miss? Or maybe something you'd like to see in a future build because you never know, might get around to actually building the damn thing. But yeah, with all that said, guys, we're done. So thank you so much for watching until the end of this video. And as always, thumbs up if you liked it, subs if you loved it. We will see you in the next one.